Hi, this is Norman Br with the Sales Readiness Group, and today we're talking about maximizing the effectiveness of sales training. And I think it's a really interesting topic because companies invest literally billions of dollars in sales training on an annual basis. And we've come up with some really great uh, factors that we think impact the effectiveness of programs that we'd like to share with you. As a starting point, just for those of you who are new to Sales Readiness Group, uh, we focus on helping sales organizations improve selling skills, and that could be you know, foundational selling skills, which we call our comprehensive selling skills program, anywhere from prospecting to call planning to uh, you know, questioning and active listing skills to identify priorities, presenting value, managing feedback, gaining commitment. And then we surround that with a um, layer of more advanced offerings related to advanced negotiation techniques, advanced value selling techniques, and advanced presentation skills. And then one of the fastest growing parts of our business is this very outer ring, which is really our sales management uh, track. It's actual, actually captured now in book form in a new book called The High Impact Sales Manager. Uh, book's available on Amazon. But within that, we um, basically it's a synopsis of the training program that gets to how do you hire the best people, how do you manage your team, how do you coach the individuals, and then how do you lead and inspire that team? So again, you know, those are some of the areas that we have offerings in, and now I want to turn our attention to today's topic on maximizing the effectiveness of sales training. So when we think about sales training, it's a pretty broad uh, term, and this is just a breakdown from ATD that it can include selling skills, product knowledge, sales management skills, company-specific knowledge, and industry knowledge. And for purposes of this presentation, really focusing on the first and third point, selling skills and sales management skills. And together, those roughly make up about 50% of corporate America's training budgets. So again, we're going to be focusing on the skills that salespeople need to be successful and the, the skills that their managers need to successfully manage their teams. So often you hear the question, you know, well, why do you train your sales team? And, uh, you know, the most common res you know, response to that is we want to increase sales. And that's the right reason to invest in a uh, sales training program. But when you break it down a little bit, you have to think about there's something that really sits between where the team is today and improving results. And that's changing their behavior. So when we speak to clients, we quite often ask, you know, so based on this training program, what will your team do differently than they're doing today? And that allows us to really pinpoint, you know, what behaviors will change. Examples could include they'll do a better job of prospecting, which will result in more first-time appointments. They'll do a better job of call planning and, you know, take advantage of the technologies that are available via LinkedIn, via website, via press releases to really understand the clients, the decision makers, the key influencers, and be well prepared for that call. Um, another major area for improvement might be questioning skills. Uh, salespeople need to be very skilled at asking questions that really sound conversational in nature. And so the, it's not designed to be an interrogation of the uh, prospective customer, but really a conversation with a customer where you're using different questions to really understand what their priorities and mainly and equally important using listing skills. So, you know, without going to every single selling skill, I think the key here is really figuring out what behaviors are going to change as a result of the sales training. Now, we have some nice um, statistics. It's actually um, in a report run by CSO Insights called the Business Case for Sales Training. And it was a report we sponsored about a year ago. Um, but it shows a very, very strong correlation between companies that have training programs that exceed expectations versus those companies that have training programs that need improvement. And, you know, some of the stats that, you know, we've, we've pulled from this report include, you know, percent of reps achieving quota, much higher, percent of deals won, you know, also higher. And I think this third one is really key, um, the third and fourth, actually, to differentiate offerings with so much of information now available to prospective customers on the web, uh, a lot of times we hear from clients is that their offerings are often getting commoditized. So the ability to differentiate your offerings or your solutions is really key for being able to sustain margins and improve win rates. 
And also companies that typically have really good programs uh, actually have much lower turnover rates. So there's a pretty strong correlation between the investment in sales training and the types of results we're seeing on the slide. Um, if anyone would like a copy of the full report, you can simply download it um, off our website. There's a um, uh, an address here you could go to, and you can see the full copy of the report. It's pretty interesting. You know, and also, you know, I think it answers the question, is sales training effective? And I think the answer is it can be. It can be very effective. But some of the common complaints are, you know, we didn't see an increase in sales. Uh, we didn't change sales behaviors, and training didn't stick. And there, there's some pretty obvious answers, uh, you know, why that can occur. And I'll just go through a few of those. One of them might be unrealistic expectations. Uh, you really have to think about, as I was mentioning before, you know, what, what behaviors are going to change. Uh, another problem might be is, well, you know, we're having an annual event, a company's having an annual event, they decide they should do some training. So they just bring in, you know, someone who's a pretty good motivational speaker, they call that training, but they really didn't have specific objectives. What will salespeople do differently uh, as a result of the training? Salespeople may not have been motivated. Maybe you have a veteran team, they don't think they need it. So, you know, they're just kind of tuned out, they show up, but they're checking their email, they're going out and checking their voicemails, uh, you know, really not engaged. Another problem is, uh, you know, kind of flip side of that, there's not enough executive buy-in. The executives are really not explaining why the training is relevant and important and really, you know, personally being invested in, in the training. As I mentioned before, a lot of training is one-time events without reinforcement. And so we really want to think about training to be effective as training that's programmatic in nature, and I'll talk more about this in a few minutes, but really is well thought through in terms of what's going to happen before the training occurs, what's going to happen during the training, and what kind of reinforcement is going to happen to support the training. So you really see both skills application and ongoing skills adoption as a result of the training investment. And so with that, I want to get into the five key factors I mentioned uh, that we found that really um, to make training quite successful. And at a high level, they're motivation, customization, space learning, reinforcement, and measurement. And I'll, and I'll touch on each of these areas. So let me break down motivation into two parts. You know, we mentioned a couple of slides ago about the participants being motivated. That's what I would call internal motivation, where they're, the learners themselves are motivated. And some of the techniques to do that would include pre-training skills assessments, we often do that with our, in fact, we almost always do that with our programs where the, asset, the participants get to assess themselves uh, in terms of skills and, and they'll see that there are gaps and areas they can improve in. Personal development plans, oftentimes managers will put together personal development plans as actually part of a program we run called Managing Sales Performance, where salespeople have personal development plans and then the training aligns with their uh, personal development. Uh, salespeople also like to be recognized. One way to do that is through post-training certification. So it's really important to have a plan uh, that's focused on getting the learners engaged. And this is what I would, again, refer to as part of the before piece. The other aspect of that is really the external motivation, which comes from their, their managers and executive sponsorship. And we've been really fortunate to have some really great executives sponsor the training. I think of one CEO of a public company who uh, recorded a video and sent out that video to all the participants explaining why it was important, how it related to the company's initiatives. I can think of another uh, company, um, pretty large public company also, where it was a program for their um, sales managers, and the CEO and COO attended the uh, training sessions. And you know, you can imagine the participants are really engaged when they're when they're seeing your audience. But you know, at a minimum, we would want to see a pre-training communication by the senior executives explaining why the company is investing in in sales training and how it's uh, relevant to make sure that there really is a partnership as it relates to the ongoing reinforcement that it's not a one-time event. And the best way to do that is to get the frontline sales managers involved because. Ultimately, the, the team's only going to have so much time with internal or third-party training professionals, but they're going to work with their managers on a day-to-day -day basis. So having their managers actually attend the training with their teams 
and learning how to coach to the training is really essential from an external motivation standpoint. So again, item number one, motivation, internal and external. Second item that's really important is customization. And customization really gets to relevancy. Salespeople want to know immediately, and, and they're pretty smart, uh, very smart actually, uh, whether something applies or doesn't apply to them. And so the first aspect of that is really the pre-training consultation, which is an opportunity to really understand uh, the customer, their goals, and the expectations. And one of the best ways we found is, you know, intake interviews, and those could occur at a number of different levels. Maybe some intake interviews that would include senior executives, what are the business goals, maybe some, exec, you know, interviews with uh, training professionals and frontline managers to really understand what the skill gaps are, uh, even, you know, talking to top performers or going on riding alongs and listening into calls, but really having enough information to understand the, you know, kind of the day in the life of the sales professional, what the goals of the program are, and what behaviors are going to change as a result of that program. And so by doing a really good job of listening and kind of recording, you can become very conversational in the, in the company itself, the business goals, and the training objectives. And then that leads to actual program content. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're not just using off-the-shelf content, but that you, the content is aligned with the business goals, that it really zeroes in on the specific skills gaps that were identified either through assessment, through intake interviews, or both, that there's customized uh, role plays, and there's really good skills application exercises. And even the look and feel of the presentations themselves, we quite often uh, use our company's branding, and, uh, you know, styles as part of the presentation so that it not only kind of internally feels like a customized program, but also externally has an immediate appearance that this is something that was prepared for their sales organization. So we've talked about motivation. We've talked about customization. And those two are really things that happen before the training begins. Now let's talk about the during piece. And the during really gets to this idea that uh, of space learning. And it's about not just um, running training events, but really thinking about a plan where that training content can be can be chunked out. That may be the assessment piece is done online before the training begins. Maybe there's a pre-training webinar uh, with uh, kind of a quick reference guide, kind of highlighting all the um, key aspects of the training. Then there might be a couple of uh, maybe a one or two day on-site session where you go through the key um, the key skills, you go through the application exercises, the role playing, and then you have a series of maybe live online reinforcement sessions. But the technology is great, even like the technology we're using right now on Bright Talk, really conducive to um, sharing information in ways where it's not all confined to the to the classroom. And this is really a, a key with adult learners. It wasn't necessarily possible, you know, even to the extent it is today, five or ten years ago, which is we don't want people to think like they're learning from, you know, drinking from a fire hose. We want to space out that learning and space out the reinforcement, which I'll talk about next, in a way where they can really digest the key concepts and have time to apply the new skills that they're learning. And some of those technologies include, you know, traditional classroom training. So you want to have really rich graphics that are interesting, great participant workbooks, great role plays, customized exercises, discussions. Also have the ability to train virtually and the virtual instructor led classroom platforms are very robust and can be used before and after the training, which gives you blended programs. And more and more we're seeing the uh, need for on demand, you know, e learning both as a primer as part of maybe onboarding programs and also as a really good reinforcer after training uh, so people can quickly go in and review um, key skill sets. You know, in our opinion, the best programs do incorporate space learning and are definitely um, blended programs. So again, we've covered now motivation, customization, space learning. This is by far what we found to be the most important aspect of making sure that the training does result in a sustainable skills improvement, and that's reinforcement. And so the best training programs have embedded within their um, a reinforcement plan that can include tools and job aids. Um, and these tools and job aids should no longer be just constrained to 
paper-based files, but they should be in the form of e-tools or maybe even incorporated. I was with a client where they taken some of these e-tools and actually embedded them in their in their CRS CRM systems, so they're really easy to use and easy to access. Reinforcement sessions, quote, you know, in our programs we typically run reinforcement 30, 60, and 90 uh, days after training in the form of 90-minute live online reinforcement sessions. Personalized coaching sessions, really a uh, great role for the manager to really zero in on a couple of key skill areas for improvement and focus on those areas. On-demand e-learning, as I mentioned, both as a primer and reinforcer. And also uh, quizzes, and there are some really nice uh, platforms where you can get into um, some quizzes that really are more like sales simulations and really engage the uh, learners. So again, it's important to have a reinforcement plan that incorporates some of these techniques, and most importantly, incorporates ongoing coaching by the manager. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, the sales manager spends more time with the team members than anyone else. So the number one way they can influence team, we call it leverage, is by working with each individual. And the leverage factor gets into if the average, you know, sales manager has, you know, somewhere between seven and ten reports, to the extent they can just improve skills a little bit across each member of their team, they're going to see a pretty significant increase in overall results. Some of the key areas to really think about is, does your organization have a coaching culture? And that really means making sure that coaching is something that's um, not remedial in any way, but is really um, there for the benefit of the sales professionals. People want to be coached, even top performers. In some companies, even CEOs have coaches. So we want to really make sure that it's something that's cooperative and seen as a positive. Uh, Sales simulations are great if you can't actually get out on a call. Uh, it's better to practice in the office than to practice in front of the customer. Uh, call observation is great as long as the manager is truly observing. If the manager is going in there and doing most of the selling, uh, they may close the business, which isn't a bad thing, but they're truly not coaching. So want to make sure there's enough calls where they're really in observation mode. Coaching conferences, those can be even held on the phone. You know, if someone's working on their questioning skills, hey, well, how did that go today, Norman? Uh, you know, what questions did he ask? I'm curious, what did he hear? What did he learn from the customer? And also creation of personal development plans. And these plans would be set for each member of their team and maybe focus on just one or two key skill areas for improvement quarterly. And we found that our clients who've um, taken that approach really do see improvement and then they're able to reset the plans on a quarterly basis. I'm going to go back to that um, report I showed earlier by CSO Insights and just kind of show the correlation here now between when there's a really strong coaching culture or coaching programs and the percent of revenue attainment by, by the sales team. So again, really strong uh, you know, correlation between um, stronger coaching programs and better sales results. But coaching, you know, doesn't come without its challenges. Uh, you know, sometimes managers don't know how to coach, so they end up telling people what to do instead of really providing a much more cooperative uh, environment where they're coaching people on what to do. They may not coach the right people. They may be trying to coach consistent underperformers, and, you know, that can become a really big time sink. And, you know, we found that the best allocation of time is really coaching the middle because, you can move the middle, you're going to make huge progress. Um, they may not have a consistent coaching process, which really means that there probably hasn't been a coaching program. And the process helps them become very effective in how they coach. And also in larger organizations leads to great consistency in terms of how the coaching is performed. And then, you know, as I mentioned before, on the coaching culture, we, we don't want the coaching to come across as remedial or confrontational. So if coaching is only offered when someone isn't doing a good job, back to that, you know, the issue of coaching bottom performers, that is exactly how it's going to be interpreted. So we really want to make sure that it's very collaborative. The salespeople are invested in the coaching, and there are coaching plans that are agreed to by the salesperson and their manager on, on a quarterly basis. Which brings us to our fifth area. So we've covered, again, just to recap the four areas of motivation, customization, space learning, and reinforcement. Uh, 
And now we want to get to our final area of measurement. And so we talked earlier in this um, presentation about looking for behavior change. So one of the key things is really at the outset of the uh, training is to um, really figure out what will salespeople do differently and how will it affect their behaviors. And if we improve these behaviors, what, what would we expect to see in the, in the form of business results? And some of those areas could be like improved ramp-up time for new salespeople, uh, more first-time appointments with new customers, uh, higher win rates. But to really understand if the um, behaviors change, you can run some really nice post-training assessments. You can have sales simulations. And we think the best way is really through field observation by having the managers uh, observe the salespeople in action and see if they're actually doing a better job than they used to of you know, performing the, those selling skills and the underlying behaviors. And then making sure that the sales reps are, are held accountable, and that gets back to um, you know, the reinforcement plan. So with that, just to, to recap, we've, we've talked now about five key areas. We've talked about motivation, customization, space learning, reinforcement, and then reverse engineering so that we can really measure the impact of the overall training program. With that, a couple of key takeaways. Clearly define your training objectives. Really important to understand where you're going. Focus on motivation, both internal motivation for the learners, external motivations from your uh, managers and uh, senior executives. Customize for relevancy, and that includes both consultation to really understand the situation and what's, what you're trying to work on, and then building customized role plays and scenarios and really aligning the program with the, with the skill gaps. Leveraging spaced learning to really develop a comprehensive program that has a really strong before, during, and after component. Reinforce the training, uh, particularly through, through coaching by the managers. And at the outset, create some very realistic measure, metrics so you can measure uh, training results. So that's uh, you know kind of our thoughts on maximizing the effectiveness of sales training. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, please contact us. I'll put up some information for that. You can also download our white paper on maximizing the effectiveness of sales training. It goes into detail on each of the five areas that we've covered. You can also uh, follow us on LinkedIn. So we post all of our blogs, even our video blogs, to LinkedIn. So a lot of, um, you know, I think really strong content available uh, through us. Uh, most importantly, if you have questions or are interested in learning more, give us a call or contact us, and we'd love to um, create have a conversation and see if we could be helpful uh, in some way as you look to maximize the effectiveness of your sales training. So with that, thank you very much, and uh, look forward to hopefully hearing from you at some point in the future. Take care.